So not so long ago, I was given this racket. So on the face of it, it looks very much like a Wilson Pro Staff uh, Roger Federer RF97 uh, V11 racket. However, um, it was actually bought by somebody who thought they were getting an original at a cheap price. And I think it's actually a knockoff. So it's actually got lots of the signs, lots of the things that you might expect to see, but you can tell butt cap doesn't look correct. Um, no entry point there. Um, and also the, just the general kind of feel of it isn't great. You also don't have the um, Wilson markers just down here as well. So um, it's just, uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good looking fake by the looks of it. Um, obviously I've got this racket, I've got it for free. I'm using it as a play thing. The string pattern is exactly the same as a normal RF97. So I'm just going to use it as a bit of a play thing. Now, what's really interesting here is this racket, fully loaded, weighs just over 300 grams. I think it's about 301 grams when it's fully strung, gripped out and everything. Um, Roger Federer, I believe, uses somewhere around sort of 360 grams for his racket. Um, I strung a couple of identical rackets to this, only they were real Wilsons yesterday, which with a bit of lead uh, work and some waiting on the grips and grip enlargements weighed in at um, 381 grams each. Um, this also is very head heavy. So I think when I weighed it, when I uh, balanced it yesterday, it was something like eight points head heavy. Um, and most um, of the rackets I've seen, are, generally speaking, they're, they're more kind of head light. So I think Federer plays around about sort of eight, nine, 10 points head light. Um, the two rackets I, strung last night um, they were 12 points headlight um, so basically there's a whole load of weight in the head on this one uh, there's nothing in the in the handle in the grip um, but it's a very light racket I mean fully loaded 301 grams you know take the bumper take the grip take all the stuff off the frame weight of this racket is probably about 250 260 with most of it being in the head so completely misbalanced completely um not of the spec you'd expect the only thing is it looks a little bit like it from the distance like an rf97 but close up you can absolutely tell um so what i'm going to be doing is i thought i'd have a bit of fun and i'd do a kind of knock off mock up uh roger Fe Fe roger federer setup with this racket so i'm actually going to use some budget natural gut so you can see it here um, I'm not going to tell you the name of the manufacturer because it's probably not really fair on them. Um, it's not the best. I mean, I'm sure it'll play okay for a little bit, but quality isn't superb. Um, nothing like Champion's Choice, nothing like Babel Out Versus. Um, I'm going to use some, these aren't knockoff, these are good actually, some Kimoni power pads because I know Federer uses power pads and the power pads are probably the uh, the thing that is actually pretty decent um, and I will also be using some Ali Power Rough in the cross strings here. So again this is real Ali Power Rough. Um, I figured if I used anything that was rough from another manufacturer that it would probably be too rough and it would gaps would cut ribbons out of the natural gut here which won't string as well as uh, Champion's Choice or, or Babolat. I'm going to choose the same tensions that uh, Federer generally uses. Um, want to finish with the stringing, want to finish with stenciling, with power pads, all that stuff. Um, over the next day or two, I'm going to work out what I'm going to do to add around 60 grams worth of weight to this racket and to rebalance it. Um, probably be a case of me getting a swing weight machine out as well, because obviously I need to get the swing weight correct on this. Um, but I think it's probably going to be a silicon uh, job in the in the handle a whole load of silicon uh, and uh, probably some uh, lead tape wrapped around it as well so we're ready to go um, <clears throat> so it's natural gut um, 1.3 mils I'm going to be honest with you in keeping with doing a kind of <laughs> knockoff Federer spec here and using knockoff gut. Um, it's not great quality. Uh, I've just taken out of the packaging. You never kind of know with with gut really. I mean, even sometimes with the premium guts, they're 
not always spot on, but this stuff, um, yeah, it's got a thin coating on it, which I think will probably disappear very quickly. The wraps are already coming unwrapped. It's just nothing like what you'd normally expect. I have struggled with this stuff before. It would really surprise me if this stuff doesn't go straight away. Um, I'm going to put a pre-stretch on it as well, just 10%, just in keeping with what Federer would, would have. I'm not 100% confident that this string's even going to hold out. In fact, it will absolutely amaze me if it does. But hey, let's, let's have a go. Um, I'm going to string this one at 26 kilograms in the main strings. Um, I think Federer generally tends to have his racket somewhere between sort of 26 to 27 and a half kilograms. I normally do things in pounds on my machine, but uh, I thought as we're going to keep it traditional, I'll do it in kilograms. Um, so yeah, normally on the on the main strings it goes that way. I mean, you can see already the string is pretty much getting in a horrible tangle. It's actually quite brittle. So normally gut string is normally quite like kind of soft. This stuff is pretty horrific, if I'm being honest with you. But there we go. That's what that's what happens when you get cheap stuff. If I say cheap stuff. It's probably still more expensive than most premium polys uh, to get this. But um, I thought I'd give something a go. I'm not sure if it was the best choice in the world, but it doesn't, doesn't sound great on the machine at all. Um, I'm using the power pads as well, so you probably see them down the end of the throat. Uh, like I said, I'll be absolutely amazed if this manages to um, last out through the stringing process. I'll be absolutely amazed. You can actually hear the spring creaking as it's pulling through. It's quite disconcerting. <laughs> um, right. Just one of the power pads just fell off the floor. I'll stir that back in there in a minute. Uh, one of the reasons why of a power pad um, just help protect the string a little bit around the throat. And as the name suggests, I think there's some discussion that it can give you a bit more power because it adds a little bit more length to those strings. The more I pull the string, the more nervous I get. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. Oh, see, it's actually difficult to feed it through the grommets, uh, mainly because it's got a fairly uneven, it's got a fairly un uneven surface to it. You know, whereas you use, uh, say, the Babel app versus Touch, for example, um, it's pretty even. Um, the tonic version of Babel app is very similar to the Touch version, um, except, except that um, the tonic version has a couple of minor blemishes, but that's about it, really. But this, wow. I hope it plays well, it's horrible to string with. Just got a power pad put in there. Yeah, it's going to be a case of using the all of it, so just wait for it to snap as I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm trying to come underneath the string a little bit so I don't damage the string. Being really careful not to touch it. Hopefully that's widened the hole sufficiently for me to push it through. Okay, there you go. So that is how to just widen the hole. Just be really careful not to actually scratch the string as you're going through. Because especially with guts and possibly multi-filament as well, they'll just snap straight away. Ready for the creak? Lovely. Oh, this is 
and a pleasant experience. Oh, you can see the dust actually coming off the gut as you pull it through. So, we've somehow managed to negotiate our way around stringing the mains in natural gut. Miracle, let's just take that off. Not that it matters too much. There we go, free stretch off. So I think what I'll do for the rest of the crosses on this is I'll probably pull half through at the time just to save the gut a little bit, or I'll certainly be a bit kinder on it. It's another little technique that you can use just to look after the strings a bit more, is uh, sometimes to pull half a side of the crosses through when you're doing natural gut. And again, you'll probably be fine with the, um, probably be absolutely fine with the good stuff. It's just this uh, nonsense of a natural gut here that I'm using that needs to just be more careful. Careful when I was winding it because, like I said, they're not quite as malleable as other strings. I've just cut some of that off to make life a bit easier for myself. Yeah, as string rackets go, it hasn't been the most comfortable half hour or so of my stream. So we're going to um, see what we can do with um, regards to getting this fill up with a bit of um, silicone. So first things first, let's see if we can just jab some cotton wool down here. So I'm just going to start putting a few bits down there, stick it all the way down, as far as I can go, probably use a little bit more as well, and again the reason we're, why we're doing this is just to um, prevent any of the silicone from actually going back up into, um, into the frame up here, because despite how poor this particular frame may be, the chances are that it's um, still going to be hollow the same as anything else, so I'd be amazed if it wasn't. Uh, so there we go, just jam that down. So that's that's a pretty decent way down uh, to go. There's already some gunk in there, which I'll just clean off my hands. I'll just clean off my nice babble at wall as well. So there's already some clean glue or something similar in there. Right, so let's um, get to work, shall we? Um, so silicon is going to be just in here. So, so you can hopefully see. Squeeze a fair bit of that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weigh this as I'm going along just to see how much we're adding. Okay, so um, I've reattached the butt cap. As you can see, yeah, there are a couple of holes down there. 
Uh, but what I actually used um, is my tack gun. So let's see if I can find it. So I've got one of these things. So it's this good old Stanley uh, electric uh, tack gun. So it's really cool. It gets the tacks in uh, here, nice, big, and strong. And I've also wound round um, a total of 15 grams worth of um, lead, lead weight tape, uh, lead, lead balancing tape. So now, without the grip, which is going to be about sort of 14, 15 pounds for the under grip and the 14, 15 grams rather for the under grip and the um, and the over grip. So look now, so 345. So with the over grip and the regular grip on there, we're going to be looking at around about 360, which gives me five grams to play with when I'm looking at the swing weight later on. Um, so we're getting there. Um, I've also just done a quick recce and it looks like we're on about four or five points um, headlight without the grips on. So I think we could be somewhere near the, the magic nine points headlight once the grips are all on there. So uh, let's see. Okay, so 364. Um, that is with 20 grams worth of um lead tape um applied to the handle just here originally i put in 15 um but i had to put another five grams in there um so i, I mentioned before i was going to leave myself some wiggle room just in case i need to alter swim weight and things like that before um but it turned out i was eight points headlight with that wiggle room so i've gone in three six four um so in total we're, we're looking at probably 30 odd um grams worth of uh silicon and we're looking at about 20 grams worth of that stuff plus scripts on top which now give it the weight of 364 which is most commonly what i've been told is what uh federal's rackets uh weighing at so i said between sort of three six three three six six i think most people would say three six four three six five that's the target weight i was going for and that's with strings that's with everything in it um now, obviously, it's useless just having the right weight without the right balance. So if we get it back on the balance board now, now the target was nine points head light. We were originally eight points head heavy. So as you can see, just lining that up on the... So you can see there it's on the line. So that's a 27-inch racket. Just now going to turn the dial here. So before we were turning the dial all the way the other way. So it's just started to tilt there. So we want it so it's that should be all right. Right, that's just balancing there. So let's move that. Okay, so we're just by uh, where that half line is there. So let's count that down. So one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bang on. So nine points headlight. So um, swing weight we've got us three five eight. So I've read reports that. Uh, Roger's rackets are anywhere between 355 to 360. Um, I was aiming for 357, 358, so somewhere in between. So pretty happy with 358. That's not too bad as far as things go. Um, where I did a bit of my tinkering, so you might see some broken off bits of blue tack here. So I've got a bag of blue tack here. Um, what I actually do, um, and I believe it was Richard Parnell that first kind of introduced me to this type of stuff, is just breaking off little bits of blue tack, weighing them. So this piece combined was about 10 grams, or 11 grams of saying here. And what I do is I just place it at certain points of the racket so that, I, so that when I came to weigh the racket, when I came to balance it, I knew exactly where I needed to apply the weight. So... A lot of the lead tape which I've got is from about here down to here 
because I needed to get as far back as possible because it was just um, just so um, head heavy uh, beforehand. So I needed to place so much uh, lead tape down here as well as the silicon. So the silicon probably goes from about here all the way up. I mean, it's, it's, it feels like a totally different racket now um, because of that. Um, similarly, if I needed to get the racket more head heavy, I could place little bits here. So in ones, twos, threes, fours, um, I actually did a slab originally of about uh, 45, 50 grams worth of blue tack, which I stuck purely on the handle just to see where I was going to be. And I did that prior to uh, taking the grips off, taking the butt cap off everything, because I wanted to see just how much needed to go um, into the racket in the first place. Uh, so there we go. Got a pretty specked out uh, knockoff Federer RF97 back there.